Well, hi, everyone. So I've been doing a series of interviews with uh, the, the team here at Ellerslie. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, one of the interviews, which who knows, maybe the most important of all uh, with my wife, Leslie, has been just tremendously problematic technologically uh, speaking. We've just had challenge after challenge. And so we decided that we were going to just push back and do it as a Zoom call. So I know this is really strange that here Leslie and I, uh, two people that are always together, have a tough time uh, filming together. So, uh, but we we did it and we decided to turn it into two instead of one. So you get bonus uh, because of this. That's our way of sticking our finger in the enemy's eye on this one, just in case he had something to do with all the technological difficulties. But I think you'll really enjoy this. Just hearing Leslie's perspective on our team is so refreshing. So guys, enjoy. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, Leslie and I have uh, decided that since we had so many technical difficulties getting the first interview set up, uh, we figured we would uh, do a bonus one uh, to start with. And uh, so this one uh, involves the simple question of what motivates us to do what we do. So Les, did you want to sort of dive into that? Yeah, I would say in a nutshell, it's being able to go deeper with truth in people's lives. For so many years, probably between 15 and 20 years in the beginning of our ministry, we traveled all over the world and it was really powerful to be a part of those events because we would see God do such a tremendous work when we would come into a church or a community and deliver a really powerful, stirring message. We would see God plant a lot of seeds, but a lot of times, you know, we would have to leave town the next day and there wasn't a lot of confidence that those seeds were going to be watered. A lot of times they were in either a, a weak church that didn't have a lot of real discipleship going on, or they weren't in any church at all. And it really made us feel kind of hollow, sort of like, okay, God, I'm, it's, it's wonderful to see these seeds being planted in people's lives, but we know how much that truth needs to sink in, in order to be real and practical and lasting in their lives. And so for many years, we had a burden, a vision for discipleship where we could really, really invest deeply into a person's soul and allow these truths to become part of their existence, part of the fabric of who they are so they can carry the truth of Christianity into the rest of their life and live out a Christianity that actually works for the long haul. You know, you see so many Christians today renouncing their faith or just even Christian leaders, you know, completely rejecting Christianity. I remember being invited to speak at a large Christian festival. This was probably I don't know, quite a number of years ago. And the person who invited us didn't realize he had actually had us speak there 10 years prior to this because he, the, the way that he found out about us the second time was through one of our videos online. And he thought, oh, this would be a great message for the festival. And he invited us to come. And then he's like, wait a second, we had these people 10 years ago. And he was shocked because he said, I've never in doing this festival for like 40 years or however long he'd been doing it, I've never known any Christian leader to still be in ministry, still be speaking the same truths and the same messages 10 years later. Most of the time, they're not even, you know, leaders anymore. They're, lots of times they've renounced their faith. And I thought that was very sad. It was a very sad state of affairs in the church to hear that story and recognize how many people fizzle in their Christian walk and even Christian leaders that, that kind of just fall off the bandwagon and just say, okay, this is too, this, this journey is too difficult. This path is too hard. I, you know, being drawn away by the things of the world. And so just the need for a, a solid footing, grounding in the Christian life, understanding of the gospel at such a deep level that no matter how rocky the path becomes, no matter how difficult the circumstances are, no matter how much pressure from the culture or those in your life that don't understand your journey, no matter how much of that you go through, you do not let go of Jesus. Amen. And that was our motivation for starting Ellerslie. We wanted to have a place where we could take a group of eager Christians and pour truth into them, establish them in truth and send them off to live a victorious Christian life. And I remember a lot of people felt like, okay, you're leaving this successful ministry on the road where you're speaking to thousands of people every weekend and, you know, best-selling books. And you're coming to a place in ministry where you're taking maybe a hundred people, a much smaller group of people, and just pouring more deeply into those few hundred people at a time. And, or if not even a few, sometimes 50 to a hundred people at a time, it just felt like kind of a step down. 
And actually we knew that we were onto something when we, when we, first of all, we felt led by God to sort of come off the road and, and pour ourselves into a discipleship ministry, because we know that's what the church today truly needs. But second of all, we got a lot of flack from the enemy when we first started Ellerslie, we had, and that was one of the things that helped reassure us we were on the right track. And that's something I would say to anyone who's stepping out in any kind of ministry, if you're getting hit really hard with just attacks and the enemy is just coming at you often. Oftentimes it means that you're on the right track. You are taking a step of obedience. That's very significant. And so our, I remember just some of the attacks that came against us in that early time when we were first trying to get Ellerslie off the ground, our house flooded, I think like seven times in a year or a two year period. I don't remember. Yeah. Technically the number was six times in the first year of Ellerslie, we right. had six floods. Yes. Which yeah. is so weird. We live in Colorado in a very dry part of the country. We're not in some kind of floodplain with our house or anything like that. It was on a hill. <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, we, we did have some like sloping issues that we had to eventually resolve with landscaping, but overall, like there wasn't a good reason practically why our house kept flooding. First, it was a septic backup. Then it was, you know, rainwater flooding into the basement windows. And then it was like the laundry room, like, uh, attachment came undone and the whole laundry room flooded and leaked down into the, it was just all these random floods. And we just felt like God, the enemy is really trying to harass us. And I think a lot of times the floods came after you would speak a very specific message called immovable. Was it, it was immovable at Ellerslie. And then we'd get the flood and we finally just decided to stand our ground spiritually against that. And that stopped happening. But a lot of things happened in those, those first couple of years of starting Ellerslie, where we were getting a lot of noise from the enemy and it reassured us it was hard. Uh, and we really had to put on the armor of God and fight this spiritually with the tools that God had given us. But it was also reassuring to say, if the enemy is going to give us this much attention, we must be doing something right, something that's significant in the kingdom of God. And so that is the passion behind it, that, that hunger for real discipleship, taking people deeper, establishing these truths where they will last for the rest of their lives. And it's not going to be an emotional high that they're going to get in an event and then life gets in the way. They are going to carry this with them for the rest of their Christian life. And the significance of discipleship is very real, even though at first glance, it would seem like, well, you're reaching less people because you're investing into a smaller group at a time. I would say the fruit, it feels more lasting and more rich. And we have people now from all over the world who have come through our programs and are now missionaries and in ministry. And they have that foundation that they refer back to constantly. And so it feels like a lasting uh, foundation that we're investing into people and fruit that is actually really flourishing out there. And so it's such a, it, it's a much harder road, I would say, to go deeper with people and to wrestle through the hindrance, they the hindrances that they have, the, the barriers that they have towards truth and just help them bust through those things and grasp this truth at a soul level. It's a much harder form of ministry than just getting up on a stage and delivering a one-time message, but it's a much more fulfilling ministry where you really understand this is making a difference in the kingdom of God. So that is why we do what we do. So I asked all the other uh, staff uh, members, what is their favorite spot on campus? So it just seems appropriate that I would ask you. Well, we have a beautiful campus. It's small, but it's so peaceful. It is so uh, set apart. And you can feel that when you first step onto the property. I would say though, the chapel building is significant to me. It's a very simple, unassuming, unassuming building. And we've had 11 years of ministry in that building and conferences that we've even done in that building, which have been streamed all over the world and reached thousands of people count. I mean, multiple thousands of people all over the world or sermons that you preached in that building that have, you know, maybe reached, you know, 10 or 15,000 people around the world in a week. And yet the chapel building can only hold a couple hundred, two or 300 people. So it seems like a very unassuming environment for this epic truth that is going all over the world. And yet I think that is so beautiful in a way because it's this sort of humble couching of like a humble environment for powerful truth. There aren't really a lot of bells and whistles to it. It's, but it's a place where there has probably been more prayer 
in that building than almost any building that I can think of in this country, at least over the past 11 years, there was constant prayer happening in the chapel. And so many lives have been completely transformed in that little building, that little humble building, that it's a very special place. You know, we've had thoughts of overhauling it and changing it, which we still might do in the future, but even just in the current state that it's in, it symbolizes for me, just seeing people really coming to terms with truth, reckoning truth in their life, uh, kneeling down, staining the the carpet with their tears, doing business with God. And that is really what I think of when I think of our chapel building, even though it's, it's kind of an unimpressive building, what has happened spiritually there is very significant. So that's probably the location I would say is my favorite. I, I, I have a tendency to agree with that. That's a, uh, it's a very, very special place for both of us. Well, thanks for, uh, making this happen. Oh, what was it? Four or five, six. I don't even know how many repetitions this has been. And even this, sorry guys, if there were any tech issues uh, with slow speech, missing words, whatever it is, Zoom is obviously a very unsteady way of uh, communicating, but hey, I think we did this. I think we got it in the bag. So uh, God's blessings to everyone. And thanks uh, for any of you that have been, have gone through all of these. Uh, just be praying for this team that we, I have introduced you to. A very, very special people with a very set apart calling, uh, and it's very significant in such an hour. God's blessings. We'll be in touch with all of you hopefully soon. If you've ever had a desire to come to Ellerslie, but maybe finances were standing in the way, we have a great opportunity for you right now. Uh, we're giving away 10 full ride scholarships up and through March 8th, 2021. So if you're hearing this before March 8th, then jump on it. Uh, go to ellersley.com to learn more about that. If you hear this after March 8th, just know our passion is to not allow finances to stand in the way. So we have scholarships for you. Whatever we can do to serve you and wash your feet, please let us do it. God's blessings.